Our next guest is a very funny comedian you know from The Daily Show and The Opposition. He co-hosts the podcast Kasich and Klepper and his new special, The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, presents Jordan Klepper, Fingers the Globe, Hungary for Democracy, premieres April 21st on Comedy Central. Let's take a look. Were Hungarian rallies anything like MAGA ones? Do you have any Orban pictures? Stop Specifically with him shirtless, riding a velociraptor? Just the flag, that's basically a Hungarian reference. Does that have any profanity on it whatsever? No, it's just a... Just a straight just flag? Just a straightforward flag. Lock her up. I thought I heard lock her up. Please welcome back to the show our friend Jordan Klepper, everybody. Good, Seth, how are you, sir? Good. I want to ask about the podcast and the special, but I also want to ask, you had a baby? Congratulations. Yes. Thank you very much. And maybe a, the most stressful time to have one, right at the beginning of the pandemic. Yes, exactly. Uh, and for the man, especially. It's yeah. really difficult uh, really, for me. And tonight, you know, if, if, the, if we can take anything away from today, yes. it's men's rights and... <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about the male experience yeah. having a child yeah, during, yeah. during COVID. I'm so glad I get an opportunity. Yeah. No, it was, it was incredibly stressful, uh, and we were we were right in the heart of it. So we didn't know if I'd get to be in the delivery room or not. And we headed to the hospital, and we arrive up on uh, right next to Central Park on the Upper East Side. And we go in there. Usually, the the dad can hang out in the the lobby. Yep. Uh, as they run the tests or what have you, go into triage, which is a very scary word when they said she's going into triage. I'm like, yeah. oh my God, get the defibrillators. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, it's just a process. I'm like, okay, I get that. You're like, uh, they have been misusing it on TV. <laughs> this is, yeah. <laughs> I have not been paying attention to ER, <laughs> clearly. Uh, but they said, well, we don't have this space anymore, so she's going to go through there. You have to wait outside. There's no more common area. So they sent me across the street at midnight in New York. It was raining. And I sat along uh, Central Park, and if I looked down there, about 30, every 30 feet, there was a man with a suitcase just waiting for their, <laughs> their partner inside to go through all the hullabaloo. So it was a very, thank you. <laughs> Again, what the men have been yeah. through. Yeah. Thank you, sir. I mean, we actually called uh, your wife. We wanted her to be on the show to tell her story, and you answered and said, mine's the story you want yeah, to hear. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's really busy. I think enough people listen to her side of things. Uh, uh, well, congratulations. I'm, glad, it, I'm glad it all worked out. Um, so you have been, uh, you do many things, but you've been going to a lot of uh, Trump events. Yeah. And one of the things you do that I, I think has made these um, so enjoyable to watch is you very politely engage with Trump supporters and try to get to the bottom of how they came to whatever position it is they hold. Yes. When you go into it, what, what do you set out to do? What is, I mean, do you have a game plan in your head of how you want to approach it? For sure, I mean, based on sort of what is happening, what is the news at the time, we sort of break down, here are the narratives about uh, stories that are going on. They're talking about CRT, we're reading people talking about CRT. They're talking about school board meetings, they're stopping that. We'll go out with the narratives we hear at home. We'll prep for perhaps responses for those narratives. But when you arrive, uh, you get surprised just like that. You know, like you can only hear so many conspiracy theories on television and then show up and hear somebody say, you know, uh, the reason I keep six feet apart from someone is because six feet is the devil. So therefore, I won't be listening to this devil sort of spatial issues that the government wants to impose on me. And you're like, that wasn't in my New York Times this morning. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of have to drop everything. It's, it's the improv rule of like prep and then let it all go and see what happens. And, and more often than not, it's just us pushing people to get to the point where they have to justify the issues they maybe haven't thought through. Right. You, there is a, a core, uh, I know you to be a very nice, very polite person in real life. You do bring that with you to these rallies. Now, obviously, uh, you disagree uh, with the people you're engaging with, but uh, do you find it easy to maintain what strikes me as like a very affable persona when you're talking to them? As a nice guy, is it is it easy to be nice to these yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. These <laughs> man, these <laughs> I gotta tell you. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's, it's infuriating. I yeah. will say sometimes you want to shake folks. Uh, uh, I try not to, or, or babies, <laughs> folks are babies. Again, good dad, I've got a dead brain. Uh, I, I will say, what I empathize with when I go to any of these rallies is it's people want community. 
And I get that. Yes. People want community and they need meaning. And when you go to a rally, what you find is like-minded people who have a purpose. And you walk into an arena and you have the former leader of the free world say, you're a hero, you're a patriot, just do what I do. And so I get that. I joined an improv group. That gave me, <laughs> that gave me purpose in a community. <laughs> right. We all have our own cults. So. <laughs> yeah. So I can empathize with why people are there, I think, but I get frustrated with the logic that's, uh, that's behind some of these ideas and the manipulation of the people who impose that logic onto these folks. And you've obviously done quite a few of these now. Uh, they're incredibly popular. Uh, you know, millions of people have watched them. Are you recognizable now to, to some people within that, that community? I am, yes. Yeah. I actually... Uh, What's odd, sometimes you get recognized and people want to engage. Sometimes you get recognized and people want to yell at you and chase you down. Uh, uh, I went to CPAC recently and I was shocked because I was prepared for people to recognize me and uh, not want to engage and perhaps uh, get fairly angry that I was crashing their party. But I was, I was shocked at how many selfies I took at CPAC, which is the, uh, it's where conservatives go to get their marching orders for the next year. And, and what I quickly realized is I'm part of the narrative there. Uh, a little kid came up to me who said he was a little kid. He was, I think, 17. He said he was Trump's biggest fan. He showed me pictures of mannequins he had at home of Trump. Uh, he loved Trump. He watched all my videos. And I asked him, like, but you see what I do in these videos. What, why are you a fan? He's like, I watch all Trump stuff. Good, bad, it's all part of this world. And even though I might be uh, espousing some points of view that he doesn't agree with, I'm the heel in this WWE world. <laughs> right. And like, he needs me. Yeah. <laughs> and so he might be mildly aggressive towards me, but beyond that, he's more excited to actually get this close to the world. Wow, do you think maybe uh, Jordan mannequins in his future? Do you God, think I hope so. Yeah, yeah, like, a, yeah. <laughs> you, you do whatever you want with it, kids. If you got a mannequin of me at home, I'm not gonna judge. Have fun. <laughs> Uh, I want to talk about your trip to Hungary. We'll be right back with more from Jordan Klepper.